Hey guys, thanks for joining me up soon on Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm taking a look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Arcane Blaster Casters. This is a new game by Battle Board Games. It is a 2-8 to eight player game that takes roughly 30 to 90 minutes to play, depending upon the number of players that are playing. And it is a competitive arena game. So in the game itself, each player is going to be playing a wizard that is going to be casting all kinds of different spells and effects on other players as they move around the arena. And as the players do this, other players are going to take damage, and once a player reaches zero health, they are going to be slugified and turn into a slug, which no player is eliminated in this game. So as the players move around as slugs, they, if they can get a successful spell off, they will and defeat another player, they'll actually come back into the game as a wizard and have all of their powers and that restored, and then they'll have an opportunity to win the game again. The last player standing will be the overall winner of the game. So highlights for me with this one, I really enjoyed the way that they do the spell creation with this one. You have, each spell has three different areas, an A, B, and C, and you're creating a spell out of that. And so as you form these different cards and spells and effects, you're going to be doing and determining different things such as range, and how much the blast radius is, how much damage is done, all kinds of different status effects if you want to go offensive or defensive. So there's a lot of different options and strategies that players have as they work into these spells. And then there's all kinds of other effects as well. There's going to be traps that are going to be laid around the board. Some of the spells will also initiate traps that will have players tripped and going into those and having all kinds of different effects from those. So it can create chain reactions that aren't quite planned for or expected, but are really interesting to watch. And then, of course, with this being an arena game, you you know it's going to be competitive, but they do it in a way that all the players are all constantly doing things, taking damage, getting different status effects on them. So nobody really feels singled out as everybody is doing the same thing to everybody else. And so it really plays very fast and furious. And I, that was another highlight for me. I really enjoyed that. And I like the art style with this one too. It's just fun. The spell, each of the spells is different and unique and offers all kinds of different possibilities. So of course, these are just my opinions. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think of this as well. If this is one you're looking at backing, why or why not? And if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribe to my channel, as it really does make a big difference, helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos for you guys. And if you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table, and I'll show you what this is all about. The game is going to be played on a grid-based board. During each round, the players are going to move around the board, creating spells and firing off magic missiles at the other players. The player that is left standing after all of the other players are reduced to zero health will be the winner. So moving in, we have the grid board where the players are going to be moving around and you can move both orthogonally and diagonally. Diagonally is going to cost you two movement points where moving orthogonally is only going to cost you one. And you can move in any direction you want to. You're also going to notice these little tokens out here. These are going to be traps the players are going to run into throughout the game or be pushed into. And these are going to have all kinds of different effects. Some of them will be positive with health, healing the players. Some will have burst effects with conditions such as frozen. Some of them will push players. Some of them won't do any damage. And some of them will do damage. So there's a whole selection of them that will be randomized. And the players will build to put them out throughout the game as they cast spells. The players are also going to choose the length of the game as you'll have 20 hit points in a long game, 15 hit points in a medium game, and 10 points in a short game. So it just depends on what kind of game you're feeling like playing. Then the players are going to receive spell cards. And during the second phase of the rounds, each player is going to prepare a spell. They're going to do this as fast as they can in order to get a higher initiative and be able to fire off their spells first. Now, the players can choose to take their time, obviously, getting a, or creating a better spell or a more effective spell or something that they're after. And these are going to have all kinds of effects. So let's go ahead and say, for example, that with our yellow player, we're going to start out. And each spell is going to have three sides, an A, B, and C side. And so when you're creating that, you're going to create a spell based on that. So you'll have a A side, a B side, and a C side. And then during your turn, you're going to reveal that and cast that spell. So let's go ahead and show you how to create a spell. So for this, what I like to do is line up all the cards, starting with the A side and choosing one that I like. 
So for example, with our player here, we have a lot of different options and each of these is going to add different effects. We have the range that the spell is going to go and all of these are cumulative among all the cards that we play. So these will all be totaled up during the casting step, which I'll go through. So our player here, let's go ahead and say that he wants to do uh, have one range, do a damage, and potentially heal if he takes any damage. So he'll select this card for his A side. Then we'll move on to the B side, so we'll go ahead and span these out as well. And then again we'll go ahead and choose one of these. So our player wants a little bit more range and uh, some more damage, so we'll do that. And then finally we'll move over to the C side, where our player is going to select, let's go ahead and go with some more damage, a effect, and a shield to potentially help us from taking damage. From there then our other players would also do this same thing, and then once a player completes their spell they'll go ahead and take the top token of the initiative. So our player here had the first one, and we'll go ahead and say that our player here got the second one. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll create a spell with him, and we'll just pre-generate this. From there, we move into the third step, which is the casting step. So again, we would go in initiative order with our player here flipping over his cards and reading out the spell in a wizardly voice. So we have a meaty flaming shadow. So with this, then we would move into the resolution where we're going to look in an effects reference, as you guys can see here, and then move our way from the top down, resolving each one of those effects in order based on when they show up. So first off, as you can see, there are no chaos symbols on this spell, and we don't have any split effects either. So the first thing we're going to have is movement. So we have a movement of one plus two more for a movement of three on this spell. So then we would place a magic missile on our player and then move it three spaces in any direction we want to. So again, diagonal movement would cost us two points and then any other orthogonal movement would cost us an additional point. So we can only get to about there. So we're not going to get enough to our player. Then we would continue down that chart, resolving any other effects. So we do not have a teleport or burst effect on this. So next we would total up the damage. So one, two, three, four, five points of damage on that space. So if we would have been able to get to red, we could have done some decent damage to him. Then we have any status effects. So we would have a blind effect. And there are three different status effects that are negative. We have blind, frozen, and slowed. With blind, when if your player has blind, then they have to randomly generate their spell, shuffling up their cards, and then selecting an A, B, and C side of their spell. With frozen, that means your player is not allowed to move, as they are stuck in place. And then finally we have slowed, which is going to slow us down, and so with our spell generation, we would only use two cards, an A and a C side. There are also two positive effects. We have Shielded, which is going to stop all the damage from a single source, and Hastened, which would allow us to use four cards when casting a spell. We would add an additional B to that. So those spells can be really powerful. So then let's go ahead and move over to Red and see what we came up with there. So we have Tactical Irritating Fireball. So again, with this, we have one chaos symbol now, so we would roll a six-sided die to determine the effects of that. And it is a one, so it's going to add three to that movement value. So now we're up to six, seven, eight movement. So again, we'll go ahead and grab his fireball and move it. So we have eight points of movement. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we do hit him. Then we're going to add the other effects. So then we have a movement or a teleport. So we have to teleport with this. So let's go ahead and move one, two, three over to here. Now let's go, actually let's go one, two back here. Get a good range. Then we'll continue on. So we've done all that. We calculate our damage. So we do three damage and it is a burst effect. So it means it's going to hit the space that it lands on and all eight spaces around it. So we could actually hit a number of wizards with that if we were lucky enough to have them clustered together. So it is going to do three damage. So then we would reduce our wizard's health down by three. And it is going to also push our wizard two spaces. So we can choose the direction we push our wizard. So let's go ahead and shove him this way two spaces. At that point, we move into the fourth phase of the round where our wizards will go ahead and discard all their cards. They'll receive their magic missile tokens back, and we would deal out new cards to our player with each player receiving a number of cards up to their hand limit, which is six. 
then we would go ahead and move into the next round unless our players had been eliminated down to zero health. Now let's go ahead and talk about that. So when a player reaches down to zero, so let's go ahead and say that our players have been playing for a while and yellow had received enough points to reduce his health to zero. At that point, our wizards never actually die. They actually become slugs or slugification. So with our, our token, we flip it over and then there's a chart as you guys can see here. Based on the amount of damage you took, if it reduced your health to zero and then went past it, so let's go ahead and say that our player had two health left and he got hit with a magic missile that did 10 damage. So he would reduce that down to zero. So there is no zero on a 20 sided die, so we'll just put it down to one. And any additional damage beyond that is going to be added to his dice roll. So he actually got hit by 10 damage, so he has eight remaining. So he's going to add eight to whatever he rolls on this. And then consult that chart as you guys can see. And then based on the effects that he gets, he's going to add that to it. So he rolled a two, plus eight is going to give him a result of 10, which is going to be a burst three freeze. So a burst three is going to affect all the squares around him in three. So it covers a huge part of the board. And anything that's caught in that would be frozen and have a frozen effect put on them. Now, as our player, our players aren't out as slugs. They are going to have a lot of reduced effects. They're going to drop all of their cards from their hands, even if they haven't cast a spell yet. They would draw two new cards. And then as a slug, they're only going to get to play one card a turn, but they can choose whichever side they want to for that spell. So A, B, or C. Now, if a player that's a slug is able to knock another wizard out that is not, then they will also they will regenerate and come back in with a number of hit points and their full effect again. So in this way, once you're a slug, you're not completely out of the game yet. You can get back in and still win the game, but you have to be a wizard in order to win the game. As a slug, you are not able to. And the last thing I want to show you is a round in or a turn in, in the game. And this is in the middle of the game. Our players have taken some damage and are ready to move into the next round. So the start of a round is the run phase where each of our players can move to four spaces. Now, if a player has a frozen status effect, such as our green player, they are not allowed to move. And then at the end of the turn, they'll discard that. So again, we'll go ahead and start with our player that has the highest initiative or the lowest initiative right now, which is our purple player, and they can move up to four spaces and any diagonal movement they move is considered two spaces. So our purple player is kind of in this nest of traps, so she is going to move out two spaces to there. Then we'll move on to the next player. So our yellow player is going to move four spaces, one, two, three, four. Our red player is going to go next. He does not want to be that close to the yellow player, so he's going to move back three spaces. And then finally, our green player is not allowed to move because he is frozen, so he will go ahead and discard that and not move. From there, then, we will place our tokens back in the center, and this is also going to represent a countdown to our players being able to look at their cards. As before this, the players are not allowed to look at their spell cards to generate a new spell. So at that point, then our players are able to do that. And this is going to be, in a way, a race. Depending upon how our player, how long our players take, as soon as a player is done, they'll take the top card of the initiative stack, and that will be their turn order. So our players may want to, to go through it fast or take their time and generate a, a proper spell or a defensive spell or however they want to do it. So I'm not going to race through it as I'm only one player, but let's go ahead and start with our player over here. He is both blinded and slowed, which means that he is only going to be able to generate a spell using two cards. And with him being blinded, he has to do this randomly. So he has to mix up his cards and then he'll choose an A and B side randomly. So we'll do that and that. And then our last player over here, yellow, that player has hastened, which is doubled, so it'll last for two turns. And this lets him generate a spell using four cards. So again, we'll place this out. And then our players, I'm going to go ahead and just deal out our initiative cards. So we'll do that. We'll give, we'll do that. Then we'll move into the third part of the round, which is the casting step. So starting with our yellow player, they, each player will reveal their spell and resolve its effects. So with our yellow player, we have intense, exploding, branching, horror, nasty. Okay, so then our player is going to consult the effects reference, as you can see here, and then follow them down moving through. So the first one is chaos, and we do have two chaos symbols, so we'll roll the dice. 
All right, and our player rolled a two and a four, and as you can see on the chart, that's plus two damage and a burst effect. So this is going to be a nasty spell. So from there, then our player is going to continue on. We add up all of the movement, and if there's a split effect, which there is, so our yellow player is going to place out two tokens. So we'll go here, and let's do there. From there, then we'll total up our movement. So we have three, four, five, six, and it is going to have a burst effect as well. So let's go ahead and start. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. From there, then we have that burst effect. So it's gonna hit everything in those spaces. So actually let's go this way. Then we'll hit the uh, green player as well. So we have two, four, five, six, seven, plus the two there. So we have nine points of damage from each one of these magic missiles. So we're going to do 18 points to red, which he has the shield effect. So he's going to discard that to stop one of those, but the other one goes through and is still going to drop him to zero. Green is also going to take nine points of damage. So that will drop him down to five points. And then we'll move into the slugification. So anytime a player is reduced to zero hit points, they're gonna roll on the slugification chart. So as you guys can see here, the player is going to roll their D20, and they're gonna add in the additional damage that was done above their health. So we only did one additional damage, so that'll be added to whatever we roll. So we rolled a 10, and we'll add the one to that, which is a push the destroyer four. So we can push yellow up to four spaces. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and we have to resolve the traps that he moves through resolving each trap in order. So first off, when he stopped here, so let's do this one, it is a move one. So we're gonna go ahead and finish off his move here and then push him one more space this way. And then it's two damage, so then he'll take two and drop him down to 10. And these will be discarded. Then our, play, our red player has to discard all of his cards and he'll be dealt two new cards and he won't be able to, when he casts a spell, he only can cast it with one card. So he'll receive two new cards, and we'll just go ahead and say that he chose side E or C. And then you flip his token over. So at this point, and continuing on forward, once you're a slug, you cannot receive any status effect tokens. You won't do any damage, and you, or you won't take any damage. You won't be able to heal up, and you can't win the game as a slug. But if you knock out a wizard that is not a slug, then you'll actually revive and come back in the game and then you have another shot at winning. So you're never actually completely eliminated, which is really nice. So from there, then we'll move on to our next player who is uh, green. So green has that blinded and slowed. So he's gonna go ahead and discard those now as he's resolved those effects and flip over his cards. So he has a cool acid. This has got a range of one and is gonna do four damage and freeze and blind somebody. So unfortunately with green, he doesn't have much range to it. So, I mean, the, the most he could do is up here or over there, and it is out of range of anybody. So his spell was a dud. Moving over to purple, purple reveal. And has the lush buzzing petals. So with this one, it's going to have a range of five. It will have a burst effect, and it is going to do one damage. So with purple, he's going to choose where he wants to go. So he'll go one, two, three, four, five. It's going to have that burst effect. So it's going to hit all the spaces around it. And it's also going to have two traps on it. So it's going to drop two traps in each space, and it does one damage. So yellow will take one, so he's down to nine. And then it's going to get two traps in each space, and it's also going to push. So we'll have two there, two here, two there, two here, and two on yellow, plus two on its space. So then yellow is going to have to resolve that effect, and he's also going to be pushed two spaces. So we'll push him up here onto this one, so we'll resolve these effects. So he heals one and takes one damage, so they cancel each other out. But then we also have these here 
which are one damage, one damage, and two damage. So it takes four damage as a burst effect. So that brings him down to five. And then these will be discarded. And then we are finally over to red to go. So red would reveal his and resolve his effect. So he has three chaos and a one damage. So if he gets a little bit of range, he could actually do some damage here. So we've got six range, and it's going to also have a push three effect with one damage. So with red, he has a range of six, and unfortunately, there's nowhere he can go that's going to get him onto anybody at this point. So he goes one, two, three, four, five, six. There's no one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so he is unlucky with that. Otherwise, he could have probably done a little bit of damage at least. So at this point, then we move into the last part of the round, which is a cleanup. So each of our players will discard any cards they used. They'll get dealt back up to their starting hand size of six and we'll get their tokens back. And then we will go ahead and move into a new round. This is going to continue until only one wizard is left standing. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful in deciding whether or not you want to back this title. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have about the game. As always, if you found these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel as it really does make a big difference, helps me to continue to grow and produce these games. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.